real radios and this time it is a radio mobile CB201 it's got a bit of rust but the customer is going to deal with that when we can when we've got around to fixing it so it's got its side bobbles I must remember that because anyone who sends radios in don't send the side screws because it's an accessory we could easily lose so don't send any screws because we would likely to lose those so I've run off the circuit diagram it looks like I've run out of uh, white paper that's cross threaded let's hope it hasn't been turned into something else See if we can get that one out. We actually have. I'll put that case side back on as soon as we've verified that it's okay. Pop the speaker off. Looks unmolested on the inside. So it uses the Cybernet 135, which is a chassis, which is a compact version of the 134. And if I remember, it is negative earth, as in not floating. So you can see we've got the original ceramic filter there, which I'm pleased about. Yep, that seems fine. So we'll pop this back on. I'm going to take a black and white photo. This seems to be the new policy over the last few weeks. And then we can file them away. Rather than doing little diagrams. So if we get our standard Cybernet mic out, it's the one that says Cybernet on it. You wouldn't believe that, would you? So it might only have four fairy lights as a as a bar graph display of of meter uh, for the S reading and for the relative RF output, but at least they're adjustable so you can make it read something. Not pre programmed. So we'll get our crocodile clips, and we'll have a look at what it's doing. I used to have different power leads for different sets, but we ended up they get, got in short supply, and you end up selling them, and then you can't get replacements. And um, we're making the, um, the Amstrad ones. We wish we were. Um, we're making the um, Maxcom ones, and we've got those on eBay. Um, and we can get the these ones. We can get the Unidone ones with the three pins, but some of the others are are really elusive. Right, we'll switch the power supply on. Come on, on channel 12. And we'll go for picture in picture. We will. And hopefully, I'm going to stand up. Oh, yeah. We have. So let's see what he's doing on transmits. I'll switch the. Test set to the 3 watt scale. 
So full of the scale deflection will be 3 watts. We don't have transmit. I haven't read what he said in his email. Let's go on to the other power setting. We also don't have transmit. And because we've got no transmit, we've got no bar graph, unlike modern sets, which give you a bar graph saying they are transmitting when they're not at all. So let's see whether it's actually receiving. So I'll plug in the uh, test equipment into the... got a bit of dirt in it see whether we can just I'll turn the power off a moment it's not like we can all we can't like put a new one of these in because they are concentric you're just not going to get that kind of thing especially now these are 40 years old Let's see whether that's better. Hopefully it'll get better. It'll ride up with wear. Right. Um, let's look at receive and just see whether it's actually receiving. The object of this exercise, if it's receiving we know the synthesizer is running if it's not receiving we know the synthesizer isn't running not everybody will know that not everybody has done this forever so put channel 20 in on the signal generator which is 27.79125 Put 100 microvolts signal on. And there we have it. We'll put the cyanide meter on. We'll go over to the cyanide meter and let's see what the sensitivity is. So right from the word go it is doing a very healthy 0.35 microvolts I'll write it back on the circuit 0.35 microvolts for 12 dB cyanide so has it been on a bad aerial and damaged the output transistor well this is the next kind of Thing we'll be looking at. So one of the easiest tests is to get your walkie-talkie, which isn't in your workshop because you used it to do something else with. As it happens, we've got another one, but it hasn't got an aerial on it. When I key up, does this receive? Oh, it's another of those sets, is it? When you key up, the speaker goes into feedback. So override the squelch. Right, well, I can't hear anything on that. So chances are... The VCO is wildly out. Now, we don't have set up details for this. So what we're going to do, which we've done before, and I will have documented at some point. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and see if I can find my orange folder because there's about 10 sets in there. Um, and you never know, it might save me having to do this work twice. Okay, so when I found the orange file, which has about 10 popular sets in it, I found the Cybernet Beta 2000 and the diagrams we've done before. So, because we want to look at the VCO and because we don't have any instructions on that, the chassis is actually the same as the Cybernet 134 by and large, and it's even got the same component number. So, when we look at test point one, is the junction of resistor four, it is 
just like it is on the Cybernet 134, um, which is this is for the Roto 240. And um, so, where are we? Here we go. There's channel one. Just make sure the radio will power it back up. In fact, I'll tell you what, we've connected it back up to power. I did just take a photo of it. it took its mug shot. So, if I recall, the resistor poking out of the wax there with no installation on it is resistor 4, and that's our test point. So it's exactly the same procedure as the Cybernet 134. So we'll get the Aldi multimeter out like we would. And we'll just prove that the chassis is er. Look, we'll put a red wire for Earth. That's what that's what you do. So just go to volts. Check we've got our rail voltage. We have. So we're on channel one. We would be if I turned the knob. Now we're on channel one. Keep that in shot. And we need to find 1.8 to 2.5 volts it's a little bit high so we're going to transmit and we've got 0 0.59 which is going to be out of lock so if I remember rightly it's the trimmer for transmit. we're not getting that. It might help you if we actually have the right meter on the screen as well. So going back to receive, let's make sure this is within the kind of expectations. it there. I'm just going to change channel while monitoring it to channel 40 and yeah no problem at all back to 1. 40, 1. Just what you'd expect but not so for transmit. Go to transmit 0.59 so of course there's no transmit. So now we've set up receive I'll just make sure that we still don't get anything with the transmit trimmer. So we actually have a real fault, don't we? No, it's not often you don't, uh, if these lock on receive, it's unusual that they don't lock on transmit. I would think this points to this transistor being duff. See transformer one, which nicely affects the receive, is driving that transistor. 
and if that transistor was duff we wouldn't get the test volt test point voltage well that's what I reckon anyway but you know what we'll turn the power off and we'll look for dry joints I'll pause the video okay so I've gone through it for dry joints and we've now got transmit there were a couple of uh, corkers. They're not prone to dry joints, but it was the case on this one. I suppose after 40 years and all that rust, it must have been still. So I'll transmit. Uh, yeah, it's off frequency a mile as well. Um, so what we're back to our instructions, and it should be between 1.8 and 2.5 volts. So it's between 1.8 and 2.5. Let's go back to receive and that's still cut within those constraints now on, chan on uh, the other channel, channel 40 got um, three and a half that's a little higher than I would like I'm going to drop the receive VCO I don't really like it more than there, uh, three and a half now that can affect transmit so let's go back into transmit 2.7 that's all right go to channel 1 1.7 for receive 1.2 for transmit so there we go we have resolved the issue so I do apologize to that transistor for accusing it and I'm going to put that uh, take the power off again we'll just put that bottom back on so the dry joint in question that's the black twigger on the floor we've got one or two just around this area here and I could hear the wax gurgling away so you know it's in that wax section The reason I put one screw in is just so it doesn't go waggling around and short things out. Right, power back up and hopefully we can go through a normal procedure. So selecting channel 20, we are still transmitting and let's go into high power and the radio is doing 3.2 watts. So first thing we'll do, we'll pop it onto frequency. Twenty seven seven nine one two five. It wasn't out of although it was low, it wasn't totally out of uh, acceptable limits. There we go. Just slightly high because they drop with age. So we'll look at deviation now. Wow, oh, wow goodness, one point six, that was quiet. Let's deal with that. If I get that, I've got the contents of the folder out. We'll transfer this information to a photo in a moment. So I've got the original one I did um, some years ago. So what I'm going to add is this. Test point one resistor 4 so deviation is the one in the corner it's a funny place for it to be Let's try it about there. 
Walla, one, two, one, two, one, two. Just do with a little bit more. One, two, wallow, wallow. Well, I could do it a little bit more, but I think we'll just have it at there. So it's about 2.1. Good. So now we'll tune up the transmitter. So with that information, it's transformer 2, transformer 3. I've just done that and not showed you the uh, right meter. So back to deviation. One, two, one, two, wallow, one, two, wallow. That's where we are with the deviation. So now we'll go back onto the transmit and see if we can get anything else out of it. So that was already at peak. And that was already at peak. I think that's one of our transmitter ones. It is. That's already at peak. And then unfortunately it's um, it's coil adjust, which I don't like. There we have four watts. So the coil stretcher had tweaked it down. Good for the coil stretcher. So now we'll go to low power. It's supposed to be 0 0.4 of a watt, and it's doing 0 0.11 of a watt. And there should be a variable resistor right there. It's about 0.42 there, so it's a little bit high, but that's how it's ended up. And then back on there, full 4 watts. Good. Now the meter on the front. So I'm going to switch to back to low power. It's supposed to be one bar on low power, with all the bars on low power. So we need to adjust that, and the TX meter is the front one. It will only go down to 2, so that's how it is. So switch it to high power, and it does all of them. There we go. So that concludes the transmit. And I've no doubt we can now hear ourselves on the radio with no aerial. Testing 1, 2, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which of course we can. So on receive, well it was working wasn't it, so let's hope it still is. So I'll plug the speaker in. And see if we can get a little bit more out of the receiver. We're going to start by putting an S9 signal on, switching on the oscilloscope, switching off the bench light and putting that on the inset picture. So we need to find a detector, which hopefully is on my crib sheet here. Twelve. It was spot on. All right, we'll go over to the cyanide meter. Turn the oscilloscope off, save some electricity. We want 4 dBs approximately on that, so we're not saturating the receiver. And the front end is going to start here. Oh, look at that. Got a bit more out of it. 
turn the attenuator so that it's dropping the signal. Next coil is T7. No change there. Now we'll move on to the IF. So I could do with my black tools I've lost on the floor. I'll pause the video while I go kneeling on the floor. There we go. Managed to find it. That was incredible. We have a base station, eight Harvard H407 next. We may be able to start it this week. So look at that tire. Put a bit more signal on for that. And that's where we want that. Look at that one. That looks to be right. And that seems to be a slight improvement. So we'll drop off the attenuation. We're listening to 0 0.3 of a microvolt, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0.1 nearly off my clock incredible so let's see what the sensitivity is now have I made it worse no I haven't it's 0 0.26 0 0.26 microvolts the 12 decibel cyanide so even at the excellent 0 0.35 it's now 0 0.26 microvolts uh, for 10 dB, it's 0 0.21, and for 20 dB, wow, uh, that's quite hard to achieve because it's down to noise, 0 0.72. Uh, it's as good as our Rotel 230, um, one we use for um, our kind of standard reference set. Right, so we'll put S9 on it, and we'll just calibrate the... S meter, which is actually exactly where it should be. So S9 is putting three dots, go up to uh, a little bit more, 300 microvolts, and we're getting the fourth dot. So I don't need to adjust that, but if I did need to adjust it, it's the preset just there. You've, the front one is the TX, and the back one is the RX. So it just leaves the squelch to do. So the squelch is there. So let's see, I'm going to put the squelch to full on the radio, there we go, full squelch, and I want, let's go to the attenuator controls on the inset picture, I want the squelch to open when I get to S9, so that's 100 microvolts, so 1 microvolt, 3 microvolts, 10 microvolts. 30 microvolts is coming in. I don't want it to come in. So we need to just advance that a bit. Now it comes in at 100 microvolts, which is where I want it. So, back to the squelch to minimum. Switch the signal generator off and put it to standby at 0 0.3 of a microvolt. Now we advance the squelch control on the radio until we get to the threshold threshold is when the background noise just disappears for people who are new to this. Okay, we now switch the signal generator back on. And it's straight in. So it's coming in. It's actually coming in at 0 0.31 of a microvolt. It's leaving us as 0 0.26 of a microvolt. So that's a very useful squelch. Good. I'm just going to colour in my photograph. Pause the video while I get my colouring book out in crayons. Okay, so there we have the black and white photo with the uh, the colouring in bits just to help, which is, I've been doing those diagrams for, for 20 years plus, and since last couple of weeks we've been doing it this way. 
Well, I can file all that away and we will put this. There we go. We'll put that somewhere where we can't find it. You need to remember plus is to the back of the set to the to that side of the set. Because when I disconnect this that's how we'll be powering it for the on the air test. I'd say Mr. Chippy will be revving the car up, but it's electric, isn't it? But he won't be revving the car up. Are we doing a CB today? So I said, well, I haven't started it yet. Well, we managed to do it in about an hour. Right, remember to take that screw out we put in, and hopefully we'll get all the screws in without them being cross-threaded. So that's going to be a nice set for him when he's uh, done the case. It'd be even nice if I put it back together right. That one's wanting to go in cross threaded, so I've made sure it didn't. All the time I've been working on this, I've been working from the Cybernet Beta 2000 information, haven't I? Um, it would have been more appropriate to do it from Cybernet Beta 1000 when I come to think of it, because that's the equivalent model which the Radiomobile CB201 is. But there you go. And there's the Ford Roadmaster, is it the 202? This is the other, um, shall we say, the small version. Right, so we'll swap the test equipment, we'll turn that off and we'll plug in the roof aerial it's about um, 6.30, 7 o'clock let's see if there's any anybody out there any good buddies or bad buddies or indifferent buddies I'm trying to switch it on and of course we know perfectly well it isn't powered up we'll take the extension speaker out The speaker's a bit rattly, and it, when the customer takes the speaker out, it's probably got some grit or something in it. Now we saw how sensitive this radio was. Bit of something on 12. Nineteen a Roger. No Rogers to be had. 
So we'll set the squelch and we'll set ourselves ready to do a test with Mr. Chippy. And that's going to be a nice set for somebody with that sensitivity and a full 4 watts output. Very good. So thanks for watching. Repair and the alignment of the Radio Wheel CB201 from 1981. Thanks for watching.